first. I was wondering where you had got to. Then we have been engaged in similar pastimes. Luton. Elsa. As you can see, I have been forced to take more drastic action. I dislike having to take such radical steps, but since the untimely demise of Mr. Alkali, I no longer have the luxury of observing events from afar. Let her go, Horst. Let her go, Mr. Luton? You make it sound as if she is my prisoner. I am merely keeping her well protected against the more hostile elements of this wretched settlement. Let her go. That is precisely my intention, Mr. Luton. But first, you must fulfill your agreement with me. You want the sword. Indeed. You agreed to bring me the sword, and I'm here to collect. No deal, Horst. I need the sword to stop Nylon Ethatep. Indeed. And what might that be, sir? It's a creature from the dungeon dimensions, and it's loose in Ankh Morpork. That's as maybe. It still doesn't change our agreement. You promised me the sword, sir, and I am here to collect. If I give you the sword, thousands will die. Oh, come now. The world is full of people. What are the lives of those insignificant specks compared to our own desires? We, sir, are breed apart from most people. We see what we want, and we take it. If a few tiny lights have to be extinguished to achieve our goals, then that is unfortunate, but it is of little consequence. We're not talking about a few lights, we're talking about a few thousand lights. Maybe hundreds of thousands. Then we will have to learn to live in the dark. I can't do it, Horst. Oh dear, I thought you were a man of your word, sir, but it seems I was mistaken. Very well, then I am forced to take more drastic action. I don't know how much pressure it would take from my fingers to suffocate the young lady here. And I'm not entirely sure that I wouldn't apply slightly too much pressure and snap her spine. However, you have forced me to experiment. Luton! Oh. All right, Horst. You win. Let her go. Excellent. I thought you were a man of reason, sir. And I was right. I admire a man who is not so stubborn as to throw away what he values just for his stubborn pride. You've got what you wanted. Now let her go! <laughs> I took Ilsa back to my office. What other choice did I have? I felt so stupid, giving Horst the sword and staying with Ilsa as the troll disappeared into the night's fog. But even if I'd tried to follow him, the dark magenta stench of Nylon Athotep drowned out every other scent in the city. There was nothing I could do. After we'd both calmed down, I told her everything that had happened. So Satrap was looking for two Conker's jewel. That jewel is known as the Radiant Trapezohedron, and I think it can save the city, but I have a nasty suspicion that we need this sword as well. The Radiant Trapezohedron. Yes, it never occurred to me that they would be the same. The descriptions of the Trapezohedron are vague at best. Satrap must have been trying to imminentize the Garunan Eshaton. Can you try that again without sneezing? <laughs> the Garunan Eshaton is one of the many myths concerning the end of the disc world. It's very obscure. What's it about? It tells how some of the entities from the dungeon dimensions have been trapped around the disc world. Some in the lost city of Leshk, some in the heart of the Garuna Trench, some in places men don't even have names for. When the Eshaton occurs, they are supposed to be released from their captivity and destroy everything they can get their tentacles on. The usual thing. Well, Nylonathotep is loose. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the end of everything. Maybe it's a good time to borrow lots of money. Luton, I... I heard you'd been killed. I saw your grave. I heal quickly. I left a letter by your graveside. I know. I saw it. I wrote it when I had to leave you all those years ago, but I never had the courage to send it to you. I didn't know how to tell you that I was married. To two conquerors. Yes, he needs me, Luton. He always did. And in a strange way, I need him too. He gave my life meaning. I had nothing before I met him. None of that matters anymore. You never told me how you felt. What's to tell? I was born when you kissed me, and I died when you left me. I lived a few weeks while you loved me. Of course, I also died when I got stabbed in the back, but you know, that wasn't nearly as painful. I'm sorry. I bet you never thought of me as a man who could fall in love. I never thought about you at all. I couldn't. If I had, it would have driven me mad. I thought about you every day until I'd drunk enough to forget. 
I let my life slide till there was nothing left to live for but bitterness. Well, all that's going to change. I'm going to save this city if I have to die again to do it. And I'm not going to do it for you, or for me, or for the worthless people who live in it. I'm going to do it to prove for once and for all that I'm not the washed up loser everyone thinks I am. And if it turns out that I am, then everything will get destroyed and no one will know about it. So hey, from where I stand, there's no downside. What are you going to do? First of all, we have to find Horst. How? I have no idea. I do. I peered deeply into the trapezohedron and I could see an image of Horst with the golden sword. It looked like he was at the Maudlin Bridge. I took a few precautions and then headed down to the Maudlin Bridge to check it out. The image in the trapezohedron turned out to be right. Horst was at the Maudlin Bridge and he wasn't alone. He and our mutual acquaintance seem to be in some sort of dispute. What happened to our agreement, Horst? We were supposed to be working together. Really, madam? Then why was it that you arranged for Mundy to sell the sword to you and you alone? Just because I didn't trust Alkali as a courier didn't mean I broke the agreement. And I suppose you're going to deny that you were involved in his death? I couldn't stop his death, but that doesn't mean I caused it. Doesn't it? What about you? It was you who set Malachite after me, wasn't it? I thought you might appreciate being reunited with your estranged brother. You sent him after me to try and slow me down. You are the betrayer among us, madam. Don't try and substitute me as the villain of the piece. Yes, I freed Malachite, and yes, I used him to slow down you and Mr. Luton. But you were the one who arranged his death. I didn't arrange his death. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you put him there. I'm not here to debate the details with you, Horst. Why are you here? Give me the sword. After all, I've risked to get hold of it. No, as soon as my launch arrives, I will be taking the sword away from this God's forsaken city. If you want, you can have a small share of the profits. I am not ungrateful for your assistance in this endeavor, for that is all I'm prepared to offer. Why, you miserable excuse for a troll? Oh, come now. I could snap your neck like a twig if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because there's nothing to be gained from doing it. Listen, Horst. Either give me the sword or kill me. Because one way or another, I won't allow you to leave town with the sword. As you wish. I didn't think of myself as a murderer, but I wasn't about to stand by and watch Horst try to kill Carlotta. It was over in a flash. I don't even know how it happened. He's better off dead. Is that all you can say about him? He was some kind of a troll. What does it matter what you say about trolls? What now? We have to get out of the city. Can't we stop it? It's too late for that. Right now, Nylon Atatep is opening a portal to the dungeon dimensions above the city. When it grows large enough, everything will be destroyed. I have the trapezohedron. Doesn't that help? It means Nylon Atatep won't be powerful enough to destroy more than just the Circle C. And if we leave now, we can get away before the worst of the destruction. I'm not leaving the city. It's my home. It's not much of a home, but it's all I've got. You've got me, Luton. Come with me. I'll renounce the cult, and we can run free in the hills of Uberworld. It's not that I don't have feelings for you, Carlotta. I do. It's just that I don't trust you. You murdered your own brother. You'd have killed me if I'd got in the way. So what? So I'm no good. I'm no worse than anybody else. Think about it, Luton. You, me, the wide open spaces of Uberwald. Or you can stay here and die with the rest of the rabble. Don't be a fool, Luton. Join me. I can't. I'm sorry, Carlotta, but there's only one way this can end. You're turning me over to the watch? I'd like to be able to run away with you, turn my back on the city and just escape it all. But face it, Carlotta, I'd be dead in a week. Thanks for coming, Nobby. Hey, what are friends for? Mrs. Carlotta von Uberwald, I'm arresting you for conspiracy, accessory to murder, attempted herbicide, and for being bloody stupid. <laughs> you don't have to say anything, but if you say not guilty, we're liable to kill ourselves laughing. Oh, you'll regret <laughs> this, Luton. 
Nothing's going to save you now. The only way to stop the destruction of the city would be to take the Falchion into the portal. And I hope you try. As he left, Vimes fixed me in his eyes, as if to say that this didn't make up for what I did all those years ago. But I didn't care about that. This wasn't about the past. It was about the future. I looked down at the hulking corpse of Jasper Horst in the river mud, and I wondered if I'd done the right thing. But life's too short for regrets, and if I didn't stop Nylon Athatep soon, it would be too short for a shot of whiskey. And that wasn't any sort of life I wanted. Somehow, I had to get the Felchion into the portal before it was too late. Time was short. I had to reach that portal somehow. The question was, how? I know exactly how. The contraption that Leonard and two conquerors had been working on was my only chance. Well, it's finished. Now all we have to do is fly it. And I'm volunteering. Ah, hello again. You want to be the person in the seat that guides the device? I'm going to have to be. We still need somewhere long and flat to launch it from. I'll see what I can do. There wasn't much point. There was debris scattered all over the roof. It didn't take me long to get the roof clear of rubble. I hope there was no one down below when it hit the ground. <laughs> I've cleared the rubble off the roof. Can we launch this from there? It might just work. Give me a hand moving it out there and we'll see what happens. <coughs> The device was ready to fly. All I had to do was pluck up enough courage to do it. Oh, this this part I always remember. You have to give yourself protection. I suppose I could inscribe an Elver sign on the device, but I wasn't that superstitious. Oh, um. The trapezohedron fitted into the pommel perfectly. But I wanted to wait until the right moment to do it. Seconds before I could launch, Ilsa came flying down the rooftop. Wait! What are you doing here? How did you find me? Luton, you can see this device from halfway across the city. All you have to do is look up. Why did you stop me? You're going to try and stop Nylonathotep in this? It's all I've got. Carlotta said if I took the sword into the portal, I could stop it. You can't go up against a creature from the dungeon dimensions without some sort of protection. Protection? Like what? I don't know, but you need something. All right, I'll see what I can do. All right, okay. So I knew I had to do that. I inscribed the sign of the eel on the side of the flapping wing flying device. I hoped it was enough protection. I was going to need all the help I could get. The device was all I... This is it, Ilsa. I have my protection. Wish me luck. This is crazy, Luton. It's suicide. I know, but I have to do it. I'm the only one who can. Now, wish me luck.
I slotted the trapezahedron into the sword and steered the flying machine towards the portal, pedaling as fast as my tired little legs could manage. I kept flying onwards, the sky full of flame and thunder. It was a million to one chance that I could land it safely, but on the disc world, million to one chances happen nine times out of ten. <laughs> nice landing, Lou. And who do you think you are? My guardian angel? Oh, I lost my wings a long time ago. I can see I'm going to have to get used to finding you where I least expect. Yeah, sounds about right. My original launch had attracted a lot of attention. I'd saved the city. But that didn't change things with Remora. If I didn't get out of the city, there was no telling what he'd do to me. Two conkers, get the flapping wing flying device ready. It's going on another flight. Oh, as you are wishing. Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere, but you are. The Assassin's Guild still has a contract out on your husband's head, and they won't stop until he's dead. Let him go. I'll stay here with you. I can't offer you much of a life, but he can. I love you, Luton. Yeah, I know. But love isn't always enough. If you don't get on that flying machine, you'll regret it. Maybe not today. <laughs> Maybe not tomorrow. But soon. And for the rest of your life. Which won't be very long if the Assassin's Guild catches you. What about us? We'll always have the Hotel Pseudopolis. We didn't for a while. We lost it. <laughs> but we got it back. And no one can take that away from us. Here's looking at you, Ilsa. Well, it's over. I don't know. It doesn't make much sense to me. You really loved her, didn't you? Well, don't ask me either. I mean, I'm a species that thinks someone's leg is an object of desire. Thanks, Gaspar. You know, this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Don't push your luck, sonny boy. <laughs> and there we go. Discord done. So until next time, I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.